Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Rookie Division with various wind for the Big Catch Tournament here in Golf Clash and the game. Before we take a closer look, make sure that you do hit the thumbs up button, also subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications. For those of you that are looking to improve your gameplay, then you go to patreon.com slash golf clash Tommy. Do you have the link in the description down below? Or you just scan the QR code that you can see here on the screen. Follow the info box on the right hand side to get the club distance adjustment, elevation adjustment, also what ball and club type I suggest you to play with. Have in mind that those are all suggestions and you don't have to follow it if you don't want to, but there is always a plan behind it. So let's go to hole number one. For hole number one of the Waterfield Sands, we're going to play with the driver that gives us the most power possible, and this is going to be the extra mile. I'm playing with a katana ball, uh, and uh, I position myself to be at the very max line. If you do have a headwind, I do recommend to play with a power three ball in a tailwind and a crosswind. A power two ball is just enough. A maximum distance with a 15% over adjustment, and I'm using the four and a half bar topspin to get the ball as far down the fairway possible. Overpower will vary depending on what wind direction you do have off tee. Ball get down nicely on the fairway and now we are focused and positioned for the second shot. So the second shot here we're playing with our wood club and here you can see I'm playing with the big dog which is honestly not as smart. So the big dog, as you see in the info box, I'm actually going to do this one live and I'm going to change this one to play with a sniper. And the reason the sniper will be better here is due to its ball guideline because then we can attack the pin in a much better way. The big dog obviously gives you power and it allows you to never struggle with that and you can get yourself safely up there for a birdie. But on a part four, we always want to have the best possible chance for a drop and then the sniper is most, um, it's going to be massively better this is one of the weirder par uh, like par fours in the sense of even if it looks like we're playing uphill this is actually playing with a lot of elevation so I recommend to play plus 20 and true club distance so whatever position you are between minimum and maximum distance is what you're gonna use with a 20 percent over adjustment hold number one and this was On hole number two, we are going to go for a rough bump. The reason we're going for the rough bump is because that is the best and most consistent way to attack the pin. When we play from the front tee, we are in an angle that might not be as perfect as it would be from the second and third tee. Because from the second and third tee, we're using the back end of the green to roll up and then to fall back down. But here from front tee, we're actually attacking the pin directly. In a headwind or a direct crosswind, playing with a sniper from very close to midline. And then from uh, in tailwinds, we're playing with a long iron, preferably the Goliath, even though it would be in lower level on many of your accounts. Then we play with the Goliath just because we do then have the 145 yards power. So we can reach up to a favorable spot at the end of the rough line there. Now, bouncing into the rough using minimum distance with a 30% elevation using um, yeah, whatever backspin that is needed to get the ball guideline to hold and the two right spin to remove myself as much as I can from the rough line on the right. Hole number two, it's a tricky par three, which all of the par threes of the Waterfield Sands are, but this is definitely the one that I do believe we will see the most hole in one on. For hole number three, this is going to be a very difficult par five to do anything else than an eagle on. Or let's say like this, it's difficult to get an albatross. Getting a birdie is going to be very easy, uh, I must say, because this is a long par five. And as you can see here now, there isn't really much for us to do. We are going to try to be as far up on this first fairway, or we're going to try to use a lot of topspin and bounce over the rough and the sand there in the distance and get over to the final part of a fairway. If we do get to the final part of the fairway, then that's going to obviously be a major advantage uh, in terms of getting to the green and locking the eagle. Because once again, this is an eagle only par five, even if you would be having a straight tailwind of T. 
maximum distance with a 10% over adjustment and you can see that I'm playing this one in a controlled way over to the end of the fairway island. You can see as well that in the info box on the right hand side I do suggest a berserker ball, that's a power 5 ball and the reason I do suggest that is due to the second shot to make that one easier. Sure, you can play with a titan ball, a power 3, power three ball and you can somewhat bounce over the rough and the sand like this and also using some curl to the left to get close to green. However though, if you do have a power 5 ball, it will give you the possibility, especially in Tailwind, to actually carry directly over the rough and the sand directly, and you do not have to mess around with, um, you do not have to mess around by doing a technical shot like we're doing here now. But, once again, if you do not have a Berserker ball, then fine, then you are gonna do what I'm doing in the video, but at least I wanted to explain why I'm adding the Berserker ball in the, in the info box instead of uh, leaving it out and just going with a titan ball. When you do play with a titan ball or any other ball that doesn't allow you to carry over, uh, as already said, then we're going to have a wedge to pin. And this wedge is not going to be an, a gimme, it's still going to be a tough one. I do recommend that if you do play EB school version, it's a, it should be playing plus 20% elevation with whatever power ball you're using. So in this case, the, a power 3 ball. But, once again, a wedge from distance, especially with wedges with a very poor ball guideline, is going to be very difficult to uh, be accurate with. We will have a chance though, and with a perfect ball in this instance, it's going to be giving us a good chance to lock in uh, the eagle. Because, once again, this is going to be eagle only. There will be um, like an insane amount of birdies compared to... Uh, albatrosses here. I don't think I saw any albatross uh, or like I don't think I've seen an albatross in this hole more than maybe one or two times and that has come in, from tour play. So hole number three very difficult. The eagle should be your focus. There isn't many par 3s that I do believe plays uh, harder from the front tee than what it does from the second and the third tee, but hole number 4 of the Watfield Sands is one of them in my opinion. And the reason for that is that when you do have lower level clubs, you can obviously uh, you can do this with higher level clubs as well, but you're deciding to go either uh, above the bunkers and attack the pin like I'm doing here in the video, or you bounce before the bunkers. The problem with bouncing before the bunkers with lower level clubs is that you don't really have any ball guideline to follow and you also have that down slope which is causing a glitch roll many of the times with a long iron and if you're going to avoid that down slope you need to have a lot of top spin and then you come in too hot so my suggestion here is to use the guardian and all its backspin and attack the pin like i'm doing once again like in the video I need to aim a little bit further back when I do have the backspin I have here on a low level Guardian. But for those of you that do have the max backspin, which you do have with the Guardian in a fairly um, intermediate level and obviously all in the high levels as well, then the max backspin there will definitely be a perfect way of attacking the pin with a decent shot for success of the hole in one. For hole number five, I will show you an aggressive route here because if we're not going aggressive, there is, I would say, no chance at all to have a shot for an albatross. I will explain how to play conservative at the end of the video here. So I'm going to use all but one topspin bar with the big topper. Have in mind that you can play with other other club levels than just level four because it's the top spin that we're looking for not really the power adjustment is max plus 20 and i'm aiming with the second bounce just above the rough line if i would be having tailwind i would be adding, uh, aiming a little bit lower into the rough to give myself room in terms of the extended ball guideline in a crosswind i would aim so i do have approximately half a range of distance from the rough with the fairway line the goal is to bounce on the fairway into the rough and then stay on the fairway island once again this is an aggressive drive which uh, requires a lot of focus but if you are getting there then you can either with your long iron or with your wood club attack the pin for an outside chance of an albatross i'm not going to sit here and say that this is going to drop 
all the time but like quite the opposite this is going to drop very rarely but as always i do want to at least provide a playthrough so you can give yourself an idea on how to attack the albatross if you do want if you do have the balls to go for it so i'm using the backbone in this case i'm playing max plus 10 if i would be playing with a wood club i would be playing with the guardian because of its backspin and then I would be playing that one true club distance or whatever distance I would be in between medium and maximum distance normally and plus 10 and you can see that we're missing with a good uh, one green square to the left which obviously is not ultimate but at least it's an idea on how to attack it for an albatross so if you do want to play conservative and your only focus is an eagle basically the same as hole number three then we lay up on the very first fairway before all the water and the rough and then from there we're moving over to the right fairway on the top right and we're using then our big dog or we're using a cataclysm if we do have that one unlocked because we do want to have a lot of curl and then we're going to use somewhere between four to six bars of top spin all the left spin we can and all the left curl we can and try to bounce ourselves over to be close to green even though that is a conservative way of playing, that's still a very difficult um, difficult route to lock in the eagle. So you will see a lot of players making a birdie here, and there will be very few albatrosses. Hole number six, we're gonna go down the right hand side and here I'm using a power one ball, you don't really need anything else here, obviously you can play with more of the finer balls if we would like to do that, but I think as the Watfield Sands doesn't really allow us to um, to play with more of the lower level balls, I think this is a very welcome surprise, surprise here on hole number six, max plus ten and uh, once again the goal is is to get the ball as far down the fairway possible here now you can see i'm going a little bit shorter than intended but that's actually not a bad idea the, that either because now the second shot we're gonna be able to play our sniper we're gonna be very close to minimum distance but it's gonna be somewhere between minimum and medium distance always so what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna use uh, this little line that you can find in the rough that is where the blue ring is now approximately so i'm gonna be left of that and use right spin and get the ball to bounce in the rough and roll up to the green and the reason i'm gonna do that with a rough bump here is because it doesn't really allow me to go with backspin on the beginning of the green it will be very difficult to get any consistency with that 10 percent elevation true club distance and number a perfect ball it is and it's gonna bounce into the rough roll up the green and we're so close just being a little bit under adjusted on this shot hole six in my opinion offers a good chance for an eagle on waterfield sands hole number seven this is a par three which looks really weird but it's actually not as difficult as it looks and the reason for that is that playing on the right side or the left side the fairway is somewhat sloped a little which will push the ball towards the pin it's going to be however a very difficult one to get the correct speed but once you have found the correct speed it's going to be a good chance for an only one here i'm playing from the min line uh, and i want to play with minimum distance with a 20 percent over adjustment all the side spin that i can and also a little bit of top spin outside wall left curl uh, which yeah the curl will be so dependent on what wind direction we do have off t because the curl here is if we cannot use a side spin four or a side spin five ball the curl is going to be a necessary part on every wind direction we have uh, when it comes to playing from the front t on hole number seven so the outside wall curl is a little bit too much but you can see that the speed was good now it's only to correct the curl by using a little bit less and then we do have a good chance for an hole in one hole number eight offers a good chance for an eagle in my opinion it's still a tricky part four so it's not something that well it's not 
something that comes for free. Play with a power 3 wall here so we can reach easier, in an easier way, to the Fairway Island on the right. If you do have a headwind, it's going to require to you go with overpower, or if you play with a power 4 or power 5 ball, that won't be anything that is necessary. Couple of top spin bars to right spin, and I'm going to make an adjustment of maximum distance with a 20% over adjustment here. Center the ball and hit perfect. The goal is to bounce on the fairway over the rough, but to stay before the second rough line. Bounce on the fairway over the rough, and it lands nicely, and we are in perfect position for the second shot. Second shot, we play with a long iron from a distance. Um, even though this shot uh, looked like uphill, I would rather uh, see us playing it with a 10% downhill elevation. The reason for that is that we want to use that extra elevation to cater to uh, the wind push that we're going to have, which is pretty severe on this uh, par 4. Leave the ball guideline short of pin if you do not have a fully developed ball guideline. Here, obviously, playing with a Grizzly level 7 or better is going to be a, a major advantage because you do then have 4.5 ball guideline. True club distance, so it's going to be somewhere between medium and maximum distance of your club with a 10% elevation. Hit perfect, and you're going to have a good chance for a drop. Bounces nicely on the fairway, up towards the pin, and we're getting it dead... No, nah, not really dead center, but it's still a drop, and that's all that counts. Yeah. On hole number 9, now our focus should be to get over the fairway on the left. You can either use a club with a lot of power and bounce to the very... A far end of the fairway which will then allow you to play with a long iron towards the pin or that you do lay up shorter and then you will see yourself having a wood club towards the pin it's somewhat up to you to decide which way you want to go but i would say if you do have a headwind i would consider to lay up the shorter way because that will require uh, the least amount of technical stuff re regarding the drive but if we do have a tailwind or a crosswind, I would recommend to bounce over the rough patch there and land it on the fairway on the top there and give yourself an easier chance for an albatross. Because if you are looking at the other part fives of the Waterfield Sands, you will notice that this pl this hole plays insane, like an insane amount more easier than the other two. So the albatross here is most definitely in play. If you do lay up short, then we do have a sniper towards the pin. And here, obviously, the higher level you have on your sniper, the more power you have, which is going to be better. Headwind needs to have the ball guideline through the hole a decent amount. And the reason for that is obviously otherwise we will fall short, which I unfortunately will do in the video. What also needs to be said about this is that if you come into a hole, there is a risk that you do roll uh, further down the green. And if you do that, you could put yourself in a position where you do have an impossible pot, as we used to call it. Which means that even if you go max overpower, you will still not reach. Adjustment 10% elevation, true club distance. So in this instance, I'm playing max numbers, but in the video, I'm not playing 10%. I'm playing this one. Uh, I'm playing this one 0%, which is the reason why I'm coming short. And you can see here now that we there's two things. We are not adjusting properly, but also we're not having the ball guideline through the hole enough to uh, allow the ball to roll towards the pin. So again, this part 5 offers different ways of attacking the, um, attacking the pin, at least by explanation. So either a long iron or a wood club. And the only thing to have in mind, though, if we go back to the drive, not the only thing, but one of the things to have in mind is to make sure to play with a driver that gives you enough power. It's a little bit too too hefty of me to go with a quarterback, which do not really have that much power, uh, even though it has a good accuracy and a good ball guideline. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching this playthrough with various wins for Rookie Division. 
for the big catch tournament in Golf Clash, the game. Make sure that you go to patreon.com slash golfclashhome and get one of our ultimate tournament guide packages or exclusive tour text guide packages if you want to take the next step in your game. Link you do have in the description down below or you can just scan the QR code that you do have here on the screen. Thank you once again for watching and a good luck in your Golf Clash game.